Welcome back, lords and ladies, to another House Martell campaign within Age of Petty Kings 2.0 Hot Seat. Now, last time we left off by having Little Pebble Hall and being severely in debt about five turns ago. Now, for the fast, past five turns, a lot of things have happened. So, I asked the Aarons if they would give me the Paps so that I would get out of debt a little bit faster, and Pebble Hall, you'd need to come up with about 3,000 or 4,000 something gold to get a little port. I just wanted a place that had a port so I could, you know, be able to get a ship. Now, I'm not going to unfold the whole plan here because, well, actually, I'll wait to upload this for later so I can divulge all of my plans or Senpai's plans and I. That's the player's name is the Green Senpai, so... Don't judge his name. But anyways, the Aarons and I, we have a plan. Everybody's now all going against House Durandon, or the Storm Kings. Even House Hightower is now going to attack them. They messaged me saying they would uh, do something regarding the south with Dorn and whatnot. They said they were going like, to give me something later, maybe? I, I don't know. I won't really ask for anything. Because I don't feel like... I just... I still feel very betrayed when he killed my king. I really liked my king. But anyways. Things are, we have the Paps with one little frozen sea sergeant's unit. We have a ship. And we have two family members. We have King Harmon of, uh... Well, the Paps now, not the Pebble Hall anymore. And we also have Tremond, Prince of Dorne. So, this was uh, King Moors, his son, Tremond. So, now we have one of our Martell sons alive and well. So, he will be able to reclaim the uh, Dornish lands, in a sense, if, if we make it that long. Because, uh, well, to be honest, nobody really knew what happened to me or how I was alive at this point. Until about... I don't, I don't know when it was, but there was a map reveal, and then people went, Oh, looks like uh, Barry's up in the north there. Huh. Let's go kill him. So, basically I was telling Senpai that, hey, uh, I need to get the hell out of here. And uh, if you wouldn't mind giving me uh, Grey Glen, that would be great. So, I ended up getting rid of those two units, just so I wouldn't be wasting a lot of money. I'd be gaining a little bit of money. And I left the unit in the Paps. Just took my ship over here. Got my men on board. Going to go over here. By Hirsi Keep. And uh, that's pretty much it. But yeah. The Aarons wanted me to get in here. Into the... Uh, into the... Veil. And I... This is going to be a bad part on me later on, but... I'll mention what I mean in the next turn, so I'll see you guys in just a second. Alright, we're on turn 37, there's been a few developments. On turn 36, when I was up on the forums, I kind of, you know, I acknowledged it and then I forgot about it and I was subbed, but it was pretty simple that I couldn't go this way. I thought I could somehow go through this little crevice in the mountains, but apparently not. But thanks to the uh, guy who subbed me, I think it was Dragon on the forum subbed me, so he went around and just did that. I don't know why he kept my ship, though, because it's garbage. Get rid of it. It was just sucking money away. And he also recruited more guys. It's like, really, dude? I don't need to recruit more soldiers. I don't have that much money as it is. I was trying to stockpile money so I would have a, a better chance of... A better chance of just recruiting all these uh, all these mercenaries, like all the all these uh, mountain yeah the mountain tribesmen. So like I could get a lot of burn men, a lot of stone crows, a lot of black ears, maybe some poor fellows just to bulk up my ranks. These other mercenaries were pretty expensive, but they're pretty darn good. So I have a message here from the Aaron's dude. That way's blocked. Go back the other way. Like, dude, I wish I could, but there's no other way to Grey Glen, so... I didn't know what he meant until I just went through 
and there was a lot of these a lot of these mercenaries now at this point in the campaign I knew very well that you could fight the AI on the battle map and kill them at your will and yeah I kinda did that I lost maybe like four or five guys I just auto resolved it because why waste the time it's history so gain some command he's almost a five star general my king and his uh, we'll call him we'll call them cousins through marriage so he's a good general I just don't trust him with his loyalty but with uh, King Harmon's good authority I might have to trust him so yeah mm -hmm. so that's pretty much everything I got there plan goes that I should have these guys move to the south of the ear while the Aaron's make a fort or they have a fort here with uh, Utho Wainwood and uh, yeah we're just kind of working on defending the ear right now or the uh, the veil that's the plan I'm supposed to get in position and uh, that's pretty much it right now I'll see you guys in the next turn welcome back lords and ladies to turn 38 for Martel and as it is I was just kind of moving around trying to stay hidden depending on where the Durandans were because I don't see that I don't have that much of uh, sight around here except for this nice watchtower that the Aaron's placed it was very nice but yes we can see the slave camp <laughs> This was uh, pretty funny about the Greyjoys. They mentioned this early on in the campaign, and I I just kind of blew it over like, Phew, the, I don't know if you guys are actually doing that. Yeah, every every uh, place that they captured from the Westerlands and the Riverlands, they named their slave camps. So we know they have about 8, eight to 10 slave camps, depending on how good they've done. But yes, at this point, I move my men down south, and I move King Harmon. To Greglen, our new capital. And uh, moving my men to join up with Prince Tremond. And I'm able to get two burned men at this point. But I'm going to wait till next turn when I could get three of them. And maybe if I wait a little longer I could get some stone crows. But yes. Mandan Colbray is moving with his five stars and his stack of units within the veil itself. We'll see how this goes. See you guys in the next turn. Alright, so it's turn 39. Aaron's have sent us a message. And they have diabolical plans, defensive plan. Oh, oh my god, I blew this apart without even trying. So they have a plan with which we can hold out for a very long time. We might be able to protect Coldwater and the Nine Stars at least until the Durandans' massive stacks get here. So, recruit the clansmen and pro proceed towards the bloody gates. I'm gonna need your help there with an operation. My prince is heading to a fort off a passage towards the north so we can hold Snakewood. Durandon has taken Pebble and will likely take the sisters one by one. We have time to get or to set up our impenetrable defense. He sent another message to me last turn, but it, to be honest, it was just... Hey, by the way, I've got a plan. I'll tell you about it next turn, so I didn't bother reading it. But yes, at this point, hire all those guys. Hire some poor fellows. We have almost half a stack. And with these two units on their way to assist us, we'll be shy of one unit by almost a half a stack. And that's honestly pretty good for us, since we are pretty close to bankrupt now. And we only have one place. So we'll be able to help the Aaron's out maybe a little bit, depending on if they move, if the Storm Kings move on Snakewood, or on this fort down here, or depending wherever they decide to attack. I just hope that we can hold out and things go well. So right now I'm actually doing better than the Nice Watch, or I was until I bought those, uh, bought those men. But yes. There we are, and I'll see you guys in the next turn. Alright, so we finally have a random girl. 
a Shar adult. Okay, so this wasn't even a, a Shar adults. Uh, here, we'll read that in a second. But this is a random guy that wants to join our faction. I'll say yes because I would like the extra help. Get another unit going so I could bring these two units with him. We're not going to attack our ally. That would be just stupid. If I could... No. We're not going to do that. We're going to place him right there. Go ahead. Get King Harmon and Grey Glen. And that's how we're going to leave it for right now. Got these two units. Pretty darn far, actually. So, it's something like this is how it went down. I've got my half stack, just about. And I've got three more units on the way. Also, we're... Barely doing better than the Night's Watch in some things. Barely. <laughs> that's that's how that's when things have gone bad and you know they're terrible, is when you could barely beat the Night's Watch. Notice that there were a couple of rebel generals here from the from House Mud. I kind of pondered the idea of uh, sending a diplomat over to bribe them, but my only diplomat is now next to Starfall with Aaron's diplomat and yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> it was a twinkle in my eye kind of thing. But also the legitimacy of uh, whether or not I should continue on in this campaign as a faction was kind of questioned and pondered around. And it was kind of scary because I, I really wanted to keep going just to see where this hot seat was going to go. So, yeah, I was a little scared. But I did say that, hey... I'd be kind of a thorn in Aaron's side if you guys turned me AI, because he'd have to recapture Great Glen, and I also have a half a stack worth of men to assist him. So, they kind of accept that, kind of, I don't know. I'm okay for now, in the current state of the situation, but I'm at Aaron's will, pretty much. Otherwise, I'll just be given to him if my, legit my legitimacy for this campaign lowers. Say if uh, Tremon, Prince of the Dorn, is dead and his entire sta half stack is wiped out, then I'm pretty much just a uh, faction living off of another faction's good graces. And that's basically what I've been for like the last 10 turns. But being strategically strategic about it, and I actually have a chance now to help and do stuff so it really just depends how the uh, Durandans do if they have all the uh, sister tin islands or not and uh, yeah currently though we're well, right now we're worried more about the Uthor we're more... yeah we're worried about the south because as soon as this place is taken as Salpans is gone it's just Uthor and his fort holding them back there, and then Snakewood and Iron Oaks. And also Heart's Home. But that's going to be the end of this one today. I probably won't be posting another one until we're at least five to seven turns ahead. Because uh, I'm probably going to be doing a lot of camping and whatnot. Just going into debt a little bit here and there. But yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this hot seat so far, and uh, if you have any questions on how people are doing, I will try and answer those questions. I can also put a link to the forum in the description if you guys are so interested. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all today. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Barry Night out.